Good morning. It is a joy and a blessing to be here with you this morning to worship God together. And a special thank you to Patrice, uh, who I've been journeying with as she completes her Doctor of Ministry at the seminary. And uh, we will be here in another month to celebrate her graduation. And what a joy that'll be. And so as we turn to the, the reading of the New Testament, will you please pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this time. And we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit as we read your word to open our eyes to see your light, open our minds to know your truth, open our hearts to know your love. We pray in the name of Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen. I'm reading from Acts, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. Listen for God's word for you this day. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, speak a word. Speak a word of truth. Speak a word of power. Speak a word of love. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. Amen. Well, it was Easter morning, my first Easter at, as the pastor of Oak Grove Presbyterian Church in New Jersey. I was young and inexperienced, but so excited to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I stood at the front door ready and eager to welcome the people as they came. So the first young family began coming up the walkway and I lifted up my arms and said, Jesus is risen. Yes, that's exactly what the parents said. He is risen indeed. And together we said, Alleluia. Alleluia. 
<laughs> but the little girl looked puzzled. And so I knelt down and I looked her in the eye and I, with a smile on my face, I whispered, Jesus is risen. She asked, where is he? I reached out my hand and patted her little chest and said, well, Jesus is right here in your heart. She said, but I want to touch him. Grasping at theological straws, I said, well, Jesus is here with us in spirit. She crossed her arms across her chest and precociously insisted, but I want to see Jesus. I want a Jesus with skin on. I wasn't sure exactly what to say at that point, and thankfully her parents took her by the hand and guided her into the church, promising her a donut. <laughs> Years later, I have learned how to respond to questions like that. I say, look at the people all around you. This is where we see Jesus with skin on. Christ is alive in us. We are Easter people. But what do Easter people look like? Well, on Easter Sunday, it's easy to tell, right? We gather together in church and we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. We hear the gospel preached of Mary coming to the empty tomb and proclaiming, I have seen the Lord, and then going and telling others this good news of great joy. And then we sing, Christ is alive, and then we are charged with the words that Jesus commissioned his first followers with, and that is go Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then we are sent out to be Easter people in the world. And we are joyfully so. But what about the days and the weeks after Easter? When we put away our Easter clothes, and our routines resume. Our faith is tested. Our joy is diminished. And our songs are silenced. We no longer feel that Easter joy. And we forget about Jesus' charge to go out and tell people, let alone his promise to be with us always. We wonder. Where have all the Easter people gone? Well, it's been four weeks since Easter, and so thankfully the lectionary gives us a gift, and that is the story of an Easter person. Philip, one of the first apostles, was walking along, and he saw a chariot go by that, in which was an Ethiopian eunuch who had just returned from worshiping in Jerusalem. And the Spirit said to Philip, go over to him. So eager to follow the Spirit's lead, Philip went. And the man invited him into his chariot. Philip noticed that the man had a scroll of scripture. So Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading there? And the man said, how can I unless I have, some, I have someone to guide me? as was so well said in the, in the time with the children. He needed somebody to interpret it, to put the pieces together for him so that he could under, translate the word on the page to the word in the world. But this man was different in every way, in class, culture, creed, and sexual category. But still, Philip sat with him. And so the man began to read <clears throat> of, what the, of what the prophet Isaiah said. <clears throat> and then he asked, who is this that the prophet is talking about, may I ask? 
And then Philip told him. He talked to him about Jesus, shared with him <clears throat> that the word became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. And he was killed <clears throat> and buried, but then raised from the dead for us and for our salvation. Philip told him the good news of Easter, that Christ is alive. And then the eunuch saw a body of water and said, what is to prevent me from being baptized? I imagine that in this moment, it was as if Philip was overhearing the spirit speaking to the eunuch, saying nothing. Nothing is to prevent you from being baptized. And so that's exactly what Philip did. Eager to follow the spirit's leading, he baptized him right then and there. He reminded him that he was buried with Christ in his death and he was raised with Christ to new life and that he is alive forevermore. In this whole encounter, Philip reflected God's love. And so I see in this that clearly and unmistakably, Philip shows us what Easter people look like. They are eager to follow the Spirit's lead. They ask questions. They sit with people who are different. They teach about Jesus. Again, they're eager to follow the Spirit's lead, and they reflect God's love. The, the letters of the word Easter, an acronym to remind us what Easter people do. So Philip appeared as Jesus with skin on, as the young girl had asked me for, showing that Christ is alive. But how does this ancient word on the page translate to our modern world, especially a world that seems to be marked with crises? Well, on the National Day of Mourning, after the 1985 bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City, Annette Soul preached a sermon reminding people that in the midst of the crisis, we see Jesus. She said, in rescue workers of bombed out buildings and police officers who hand out children from the daycare center, we see Jesus in the doctors and nurses in the neonatal ICU units. We see Jesus in the Red Cross and the Feed the Children Foundation to feed and care for children and their families. And through it all, there is God. God with skin on. In the midst of crises, we see extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. We think of people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Mother Teresa, exemplars, right, of Easter people. But I wonder, how do ordinary people on ordinary days, in ordinary ways, be Easter people? Well, I'm preparing to do the funeral of a man who died just three weeks ago, just one week after Easter. And his name is Al. He was a faithful church member all of his life, and he attended Bible study weekly. He loved to read the Bible. And on the Wednesday before he died, they were studying the book of Acts. And so the last scripture that he read was from Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Well, across the street from Al lived a man who we shall say was a crotchety old man. And he was not well liked by many people. In fact, his, his um, house became the target um, when children would want to egg a house or put some toilet paper in the trees, that kind of thing. He didn't have many friends. 
And Al and Bill hadn't really talked over the years much at all. But after Bill's wife had died, and then Al's wife died, Al was moved by the Spirit. And he walked across the street, and he knocked on the door, and he asked Bill if he would like a meal. And Bill said yes, and welcomed Al in, and together they sat and talked. And Al was able to share his faith with Bill. On Friday night, there was a terrible storm, and so Al got in his car, Bill told us, and he drove across the street just so he could deliver that meal as planned, as promised. And the next morning, Al died. Bill told me that he was so touched by this act of love, by the way that Al had offered his presence and talked with him and gave him such comfort in those days. In Al, we clearly see the story of Jesus lived out and how God's love was reflected in this very small act done with great love. We see that Al was an Easter person to the end of his life, and we trust that he will enjoy eternal life with God. East Liberty Presbyterian Church, look around you. Look around you. These are Easter people. We are all called to be eager to follow the Spirit's lead outside of these church walls and into the neighborhood. We are called to ask questions of people we meet. How are you? How can I help you? Would you like some food? Can I offer a prayer for you? We are called to sit with people who are different on the church steps and beyond. We are called to tell the story of Jesus, maybe in talking about how Jesus died and was raised and lives forevermore and promises to be with us always. Or maybe a simple way to say it is just, Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We are called to eagerly follow the Spirit's lead and then are to reflect God's love. The word Easter spells out all of the things that we Easter people are called to do. So friends, let us be who we are called to be and do what Easter people do so that children can see what they're looking to find, and that is what it looks like when Jesus has skin on. So that it will be true without a doubt that Jesus is risen and is alive indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, amen.